of Enlightenment. Tonight, we are going to talk, actually, we're going to get some advice how to handle our finances so that all of us that are in financial situation can get a chance to gain some wisdom. And I'm going to have this young lady introduce herself. And uh, she is known as many things, but I will let her tell you all of those many things. And so uh, she is going to talk to us about money, the root of our problem. And usually anything dealing with money, the root of it is never money. So um, I know she's going to tell us all this good stuff. And I'm going to let her uh, introduce herself. <laughs> And then we will uh, circle back and ask her all kinds of fun questions. Go ahead. Oh, thank you, Ken. Hi, my name is Morgana Ray, and I am not a financial planner, and I am not a bookkeeper, and I am not an accountant, and I am terrible at all those things, and I'm not even that great with numbers. But I'm really, really good with money and helping people make and keep a lot more money by working on what's going on on the inside before you go to your financial planner and your bookkeeper and your accountant and all those really excellent money cruncher people who we need. <laughs> it's kind of the big cosmic joke that I got this reputation, this global reputation as a quote money coach. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, I, if I Google myself, it says, world's top relationship with money coach. And the key here is relationship. I am a relationship driven person. I was never setting out to really do any business around the topic of money. I have been a life and business and spiritual coach for 27 years. Wow. And the reason I focus on money is because money is the number one excuse all of us human beings give for anything we can't have, do, or be. And it's also the most perfect mirror for our relationship with life and all of our really deeper human issues and challenges and experiences around love and around worth, our worth and safety. Like, is this a safe, loving place where I belong? All yeah, of that shows yeah. up in money. So I, where I am now, uh, is very, very different than where I began. And honestly, I do what I do because I'm an excellent student, Ivy League educated, mountains of certifications and did everything I was told to do that would work, that should work and was failing anyway. And nobody else's solution worked for me. By the way, if you find yourself on one of those extremely painful paths where you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing and nobody's solution is working for you, I would suggest one or two things may be going on. Maybe yeah. you were birthing uh -huh. what the world needs next. Mm -hmm. And pregnancy and labor, not the most comfortable things in the world. <laughs> and the other thing which I find to be almost universally true, when you are doing all the things that you should be doing and really applying yourself mm -hmm. for an extended period of time and not getting the results that you deserve, mm -hmm is there's a very high likelihood that you are unconsciously protecting yourself from what you want. And that can be money. And mm -hmm. that can also be love. That can even be health. We all have really good reasons that we have no conscious awareness of to protect ourselves from things that we obviously want and need. Mm -hmm. And when we can find out what those are, we can make it safe to have what we want. And when it becomes safe, things change really super quickly. I like to say change happens at the speed of safety. So wow. for myself, I had to work out my relationship with money. And then I worked out my relationship with love through the same mm -hmm. process. And so where I am now is I am 25 weddings deep into getting married to the same guy a hundred times in a hundred countries. Congratulations. Uh, so <laughs> it's so cool. Ken, you're in, in Turkey. That mm -hmm. was our 14th wedding. Um, wow. Right? So my ambition mm -hmm. for the world is that everybody has the personal and economic empowerment mm -hmm. to focus our lives and our attention entirely on love and lifestyle and legacy. Yes. I, those are the three things 
that I think are necessary for human happiness. The really yes. what life is about is about love, loving others, mm -hmm. loving ourselves, loving life, loving what we do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, lifestyle, which I covered some of that in, in love, but also just a, a healthy lifestyle that doesn't distract you with, with pain and suffering and yes. scarcity and legacy. Really the, the total key to human happiness is, is making, creating the world we want to live in and helping others. And I, and I mm -hmm. do believe that the reason we have pain is it humanizes us. It gives us the humility yeah, yeah. To be able to respect the experience of others and want to help. I absolutely agree. And I love how you started this conversation about money. It has to do with relationship because a lot of people don't see the connection and how valuable that connection is. Because I know in my life, because of certain things that happened to me as a child, in surrounding with money, I made a con I remember making a decision saying, I'm going to spend it because every time I had it, someone always wanted it. And so I had to realize it was actually in my 20s when that um, vision, I guess, came back to me. And I realized what I had said. And then I started on a quest to change that relationship with what I had decreed as a young man. And so when you said that, I was like, oh, my God, I'm so glad that you pointed it out. Um, talk a little more about this, because this is key right here. When it comes to that um, money and anything, it's relationship is the key and how you handle money is just a piece, uh, a branch out of from that relationship. But when you deal with your mate is another branch out from that relationship and your friends, your family, and all of that. Bring us back and talk to us about this piece right there about this relationship and how we handle it. Well, I love how you make that connection to other relationships, because to me, they're all like different doors into the same room, which is mm -hmm. our relationship with existence. And yes. I like to look at money, love, and health as the three great spiritual teachers who grab our attention mm -hmm. for our evolution. And at least one, probably two, maybe all three are going to be showing up at different times in our lives. Uh, yes. If money is your teacher, the advantage of having money as your teacher is because it touches every area of your life and there's an urgency to it, it will get your attention the fastest. So you were talking about childhood experiences for me. Uh, because I love to look at the root cause and it's actually never really the money story. It's what the money story or things that don't look like they have anything to do with money, but it's, it's what is behind the money story. So for me, and it's, uh, for me, when I was about 12 years old, mm -hmm. my great grandmother died and she had set up an inheritance for me. I had grown up with her around the corner and it was taken by a family member who I adore. And that created oh. a huge rift in the family, people not speaking. And I made a decision when I was 12 without even being aware of it, that money got in the way of love. Yeah. And I made a very healthy decision to choose love. Mm -hmm. I loved all of the people there. It wasn't just the inheritance. There was another, <laughs> there was my, that was the year that all of like my family members were at war to get, to take things that were supposed to be for me. Wow. When you're 12, it's really easy to not care about any of that because, you know, you have a house, you have food, you have school, and it's and it's just not so much your concern, which, by mm -hmm. the way, for me is a good thing. So I made a decision to just love all of the participants and not dive into their different stories, but it made a very yeah. deep impression that showed up decades and decades later. Wow. Now, when I'm coaching somebody to change their relationship... The sooner we can actually get off the topic of money, the better. Yeah. So it's very useful to start with experiences with money in your personal life and maybe things you've observed in the world. Horrible, horrible things are done for money. The entire world's history of the slave trade yeah. going back yeah. thousands of years. I mean, just 
today's biggest issues around climate, it's all like money is the monster. So we get to use that, but we also want to make it very, very personal to you. So any experience that you've ever had of being unloved or betrayed, yeah. anything yep. that you may feel personal shame or regret around, anything that has ever made you feel unworthy, any rejection, anything that has oh. ever made you feel unsafe, violence, illnesses, mm -hmm. accidents that don't look like they have anything to do with money become very, very useful because they create your relationship with yourself and existence. And then that shows up with money because money is that perfect metaphor for the, all of it. Yeah. So to change your relationship with money, I would begin by uncovering anything that is coming up for you now that represents not being loved, not being safe, not being worthy or mm -hmm. deserving. Like this is not a friendly mm -hmm. universe. There's plenty of material to choose from. Make it very yes. personal and make it really, really big. And, and I know that there are so many <laughs> teachers and spiritual teachers out there who are like high vibes only, right? And mm -hmm. that is cutting out human experience so that we want yeah. to really make <laughs> useful. It's not yes. enlightened to pretend things don't happen. Mm -hmm. So we want to actually dig it up and use it so we can transmute it like from poison into medicine. Yes. Uh, one of my favorite mythological stories, I got my degree from Smith College in, I got my degree in religion from Smith College mm -hmm. many, many years ago. And I really resonated with Asian religion deeply. Mm -hmm. And and the, the Lord Shiva, the God of death and destruction, the God of change, mm -hmm. who is can look very scary, but he's also really beautiful because he's the death of suffering and the mm -hmm. death of ignorance, which yeah. is the birth of enlightenment. And in fact, he's yes. represented all over Hindu countries as an erect phallus, as if we're inside the, <laughs> the yeah. body uh -huh. of the goddess looking <laughs> at him creating life. Um, yeah. And there's the story that he, he, in some representations, he's purple. And this is the root of the color purple was he drank mm -hmm. up all the world's pain and poison and turned it into purple. So wow. into medicine. So what we want to do is we want to drink up all of your life experience pain yes. and turn it into turn it exactly into yep. the, key, the key to everything you ever wanted. So instead of running away from it, we want to run towards it, almost embrace it. And mm -hmm. when we build it up, and we don't feel good. We aren't pretending it feels good. It's like all of the worst things that we want to reject from life, we want to bring it out into the light, take a look at it, yes. and then imagine that there really is a monstrous person mm -hmm. doing all of this to you. Mm -hmm. Because on some level of your existence, you already feel that way. Yes. yes. Even if you're a billionaire because I've coached billionaires who have fear, who have targets on their back, who are worried for their, you know, their legacy, for how their kids are turning out, worried that they're mm -hmm. going to lose everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, you yeah. know, it he, the yeah. human experience doesn't change all that much because we are who we are. Exactly. So it changes on the inside before it changes on the outside, no matter what it looks like. You, you know, you you can have a billion dollars and be living a very, very fancy level of poverty. So mm -hmm. let's let's it, live a, a, a joyous, wealthy life. So you want to take up this root cause. You've just like gone through all of the things that are wrong with the world, that are wrong in your life, that have made you feel unloved, unworthy, or unsafe. Now you want to blame it all on this imaginary person mm -hmm. and make it all bad. And it's uh -huh. not you and it's not <laughs> your parents. Yeah. Because then you want to get rid of this person. It's like yes. very symbolic. It's like mm -hmm. none of this gets to exist in my life anymore. I reject all of this. It's not part of my value system. And I, and I refuse to give it space in my life. So I am going to destroy and slaughter this imaginary monster. And this is where I get a lot of resistance from clients who are very much like me, very peaceful, love and light, <laughs> you know, and and I only do this because I've coached thousands of people and I found this works. Yes. So yes. if you want to find a spiritual twist, mm -hmm. 
you know, the the wrath of the goddess Kali or Durga, you know, spiritual mm-hmm. warrior, Archangel Michael, you know, just find the archetype of your choice that yes. has that sort of sacred annihilation energy to mm-hmm. annihilate what you no longer want in your life experience. Excellent. I he, blow it out. You had, uh, that is awesome. You had mentioned something earlier that I think also is key. The first thing is, is uh, dealing with that understanding that it's relationship. But you had mentioned about loving the self and all of that, what you just talked about, uh, bringing all that, dealing with all these, these things that are inside is the beginning of learning to love the self and dealing, having the opportunity. I always tell people, what a wonderful opportunity to have a conversation with what we call demon, your demons, to have a mm-hmm. conversation with all these things that has happened to you, to have a conversation with your fears, to have a conversation with guilt, have a conversation with all of them, and then tell them, thank you for serving me at this point in my life. We have to break up this relationship. I need to give birth to another entity of myself. And it is hard. I remember having to face those dark things that you talked about and realizing that, hey, this is something that I need to overcome or else. It's it's this battle or else. And so talk to them about how to even start that journey about uh, loving themselves, because that is really, really an important thing when you're beginning your path. Oh, yes. And that's that is the second half of the process. We're on the first half. This is alchemy, the transmutation of lead into gold. So we're starting with the lead. Mm -hmm. When you slay the monster, by the way, when I did this process with myself for the first time in March of 2003, we just broke up. Neither of us were happy. Money wasn't happy. I wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. Since then, I have gotten a lot more violent in in the purging of the monster only because I found that to be more effective. effective. And there's mm-hmm. and the, there's there's something powerful in that very loud no because every yes is a no and every no is a yes. You are saying yes to yourself when you say no to what does not exalt you, what does mm-hmm. not support you, what you do not want to accept. So you have a choice. When you have this monster, you have this body of pain that makes you not want to live because it's that big. You have to decide who gets to move forward. You yes. Or the monster. It becomes monster, a very yeah. clear cut decision. Mm-hmm. I'm choosing myself and I reject you. You do yes. not get to exist anymore. And that's the first mm-hmm. step. So the victim experience tends to feel very like heavy and it can mm-hmm. be sort of damp and we feel helpless and it's it's sinking. And then the 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 anger, the righteous anger of setting healthy boundaries and saying no is more like a rising heat like a fire. Mm -hmm. And then when we get rid of the monster, then it's like open air. So there's a real alchemical process going on where it's now it's open space that we fill with the only thing that's left when we have rejected all of the injustice, all of the pain, all of the hurt, all of the attack of the monster, all that exists is love. Before I jump into love, there's one other thing that just dropped into my head that I want to say, because we're talking about self-love, I find it a very useful, helpful trick Mm -hmm. to take the worst thing you've ever said or thought about yourself and put it in your monster's mouth as if he's whispering in your ear and he's so sneaky Mm -hmm. and so mean that he whispers it into your ear in your own voice. So you think that those are your own thoughts and beliefs so that you get to take those negative self thoughts and beliefs and put it in the monster and destroy it when you destroy the monster. And now it's not there. And now Mm -hmm. all we have is this empty space. And now we invite in a new relationship. We already have these relationships already exist. We're just making them visible. The one that Mm -hmm. didn't work is now gone. And it'll feel weird and different because you've never been, it's been your constant companion your whole life. And now it's gone and you can Mm -hmm. feel that emptiness. Now we bring in what I call the money honey, but Mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like or look like or isn't really about money at all. It feels more like a God of love Mm -hmm. and it's going to be a person. I recommend whatever gender you are romantically attracted to, there's a real power of 
of a lover archetype because lovers are equals and lovers are vulnerable. So we aren't invoking yes. God or mm -hmm. Oprah to be your money, honey fairy, who is going to, you know, rescue you from your own choices. Yeah. No, we, what we want is a lover who looks at you and goes, oh my God, Ken, you are who I have been dreaming of and devoting my whole existence to. And I've just been trying to be with you all this time. You are my hero. You slayed the monster for me. Um, there's a slight that. difference. <laughs> for women, it tends to, for, for women, speaking for women as a woman myself, yeah. there tends to be this like, <sighs> this like, oh my God, I can finally let down my guard. I can finally mm -hmm. let down my walls. I can finally relax and be held by this, you know, beautiful, handsome, money, honey, male or female, depending on your preference. And, yeah. and women, we, we very often become softer and more open to love because we are less defensive. We are less yes. frightened. We are less self-protective. Men, men tend to, I see them like their shoulders puff up and mm -hmm. they, they sit or they stand taller because they have the experience of being the hero that, yeah. that you've always wanted to be, that you really, really are. And your money, honey, your lover is seeing that. And you're yes. seeing yourself through the lover's eyes. And now you get to see yourself as you really are, not mm -hmm. through the, the glasses of your disappointments and neuroses and fears, but through the eyes of love that see you clearly. Well, see no longer you. you're looking through the eyes of that monster. So you're looking through different exactly. eyes. Exactly. Yes. You know, so and, and you see yourself different. Right. Your honey sees your brilliance. Your honey sees mm -hmm. your heart. Your honey sees your resourcefulness and your creativity bigger than you see it. I have, I've met someone and, that uh, does that for me. She sees those things. <laughs> so mm -hmm. she encourages me about uh, just as the things you were talking about. So, yes, I, I, I have a glimpse of that. Right. Well, and the fun, unintended consequence that delights me most of this work mm -hmm. is while we're talking about money and it changes your relationship with money and it changes your your financial results, like mm -hmm. which is really easy to measure. And by the way, great for my business, the testimonials, you know, they're great for marketing. Yes. Uh -huh. But what turns me on mm -hmm. is that we are also changing your blueprint for yes. all your relationships. So your romantic your relationships, relationships yes. are going to mm -hmm. get better because your mm -hmm. money, honey, doesn't want you to be with anyone who doesn't love you as much as she does. Yes. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. So we're going to call this new being who is the embodiment of love. We're going to call her or him money because money is that area of life that needs our love and healing mm -hmm. for our Understood. own personal life, but also mm -hmm. for the whole planet. Imagine yes. a planet of people who are so deeply in touch with their own value mm -hmm. and have a relationship with money that stands for their value and for kindness yes. and generosity and and isn't fear-based, isn't this weird gladiator yes. suicide yes. pact that our, mm -hmm. you know, fear-based economy is, is yes. what if we transformed it so that it wasn't a competition, but it was just just like love. Yes. So, and, but it seriously, if, if you go to my website, you will see just like endless accounts of real tangible results. Cause I know I can sound very airy fairy because I can't. Oh, no, be. I've been, I've, I've actually, but I really, at, uh, I yes, like uh, reality. I like, yeah. you know, I, if it doesn't actually work, then it makes it, you know, then, then what's the point? So yeah. you have now this person who is worthy of your deepest love and respect, mm -hmm. who wants to be with you. And we call this your money, honey. Mm -hmm. And now this is where you get into action. Yeah. Because the first step, uncover the root cause. Second step is personify the root cause as a monster. Third step is annihilate the monster. Fourth step is now meet the money, honey. Now we're on the fifth step mm -hmm. of six steps. We're almost almost home. Almost there. Which is now, well, now you have a conversation. 
-hmm. What do you need from me so you can stay with me? Was my yes. first conversation with my money, honey, uh, which is a very different conversation than what do you need from me so you can love me? The love is already mm -hmm. there. If it isn't yes. there, then it's not your honey and start over. Mm -hmm. Not a failure. It's just go deeper or yes. maybe do it again. Yeah. And the first time I had this conversation, my money, honey, who was this beautiful, sweet, romantic a uh, man with very clean cut, wearing a tuxedo, holding a bouquet of red flowers who was in love with me, which was mm -hmm. so weird because I wasn't thinking <laughs> of money that way uh -huh. <laughs> at that time. Uh, but I asked him what he needed because I feel I could feel how much he had been trying to be with me all these years that I'd been pushing him away with no conscious awareness of it whatsoever. So I asked, I, I've had this sense that, well, I have the power, which is really mm -hmm. important for you to know. No, you have the body, so you are the gatekeeper. You have yeah. all the power in the relationship. When mm -hmm. it's a monster, the monster has the power. We don't want to yes. give your power away to money because that mm -hmm. creates a monster dynamic and disempowers and infantilizes you. But you, you are the buff hunk <laughs> that money is in <laughs> love with. So what does she need from you to stay with? And I asked my money, honey, and he said he needed me to love him and stop treating him like a monster. Wow. So that begs the giant question, but I thought love of money was the root of all evil. So yeah. two quickies on that, because I can't step over that. First, I have a friend who studied Aramaic <laughs> to, <laughs> to read the Bible in the original language, ancient Aramaic, and the original translation never, ever, ever said the love of money is the root of all evil. What mm -hmm. it did say was, Worshipping money will cause you problems. <laughs> yes. Yes. That then it yeah, <laughs> like any false god. Yes. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And problems show up to get us back on course. So yes. that's not the issue. But love, love is not evil. Love mm -hmm. does not harm. Yeah. Love does not exploit. Love is not greed or avarice. Love does not objectify. Mm -hmm. Love is generous. Love is noble. There's even a selflessness to love, but not, yes. uh -huh. you know, in the self-rejection way, but just like yes. my cup runneth over. That's the kind of love, the love that brings out your best self, yes. your biggest, your most divine self. That's what we're talking about. So I had the sense of how I'd been breaking my money, honey's heart for years. And I didn't want to do that to him. So I made a commitment wow. that I, I would stop pushing him away like a monster. Next mm -hmm. time he brought me a gift, I would say, thank you. Yeah. And I knew that a gift typically looked like somebody wanting to hire me, that I used to have really impressive, like people would want to hire me. And I had superpowers of money repulsion. I would talk them out of it without wow. even knowing I was doing it. That was my before picture. So Within a day, like the very next day of changing my relationship with money from a honey, I got to try mm -hmm. it out four times. Wow. Within 24 hours, four people hired me at double what I had ever charged before. And they kept coming. Wow. And I would have to, you know, I would have to create waiting lists, group programs, mm -hmm. raise my rates. And I have yeah, made yeah. millions of dollars. I didn't tell you how bad it was in the beginning. I was in two, when I was slaying my it's money monster. I was beginning. making, <laughs> I was, I was struggling to make a hundred dollars a yeah. month wow. with an Ivy league wow. education and testimonials and marketing skills and people who wanted mm -hmm. to hire me living in Los Angeles, which is, wow. I hope yeah. you're impressed because mm -hmm. that I think being able to, yeah. to fail to that degree yeah. is quite an accomplishment. <laughs> <laughs> I think we we all have a like I said the beginning and it is how we change the perspective I would say to people you can be in a situation and complain complain all day but the minute you stop and change your perspective in that same situation because you complain you'll stay longer in it but once you change your perspective and pick something else a different don't look at that side of it anymore pick something out and and change your perspective. Number one, I guarantee you, the you'll be out of there shorter than, than where you're at. Your mood, your attitude, you've given birth to this 
different approach that will probably unlock the wisdom that you need to get out of that thing while you're in it for the last 40 years. And so I always tell people, you've got to look in your current situation. That's why I love life. I love the situations because then it gives you an opportunity to practice the art of looking at things differently, changing your perspective. Once I did that, everything changed. The speed of light, just mm. like how you talked about the next day. I mean, it, it, it and you came, you change your, your, you had a conversation, you change your perspective, boom. And it's a full body thing. It isn't just an intellectual exercise. Like you no. want that monster to be terrifying. Yes. You want that money, honey, to feel like, I want to get yes. to bed with that. Yes. But since this person doesn't have a body and my human honey does, I'll bring the amorous energy mm -hmm. to my <laughs> human honey. Yeah. And because that come, I love it when, when clients say, I feel like I'm cheating on my spouse <laughs> with my imaginary friend. Great. That's a, that's a good sign. And then I, and then I did the same process. I guess it was nine years later. In 2012, uh, with my relationship with love, because I was 45 and I was still single and I was still looking for the, you know, looking for the love of my life. And I'd been looking since I was four and a half years old. And I finally mm -hmm. broke down and just really dug up why would I be protecting myself from love? And that yeah. was an even bigger scarier monster than the money was. Uh, and I wow. slayed that monster and I met my husband two months later. I do awesome. like you were talking about, you know, speed of light. Uh, yeah. there's, there's a lot of shaming in my industry of personal development and coaching, a lot of shaming, uh, when people are, uh, not getting results. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it, one of my pet peeves as coaches who say, I told somebody to do something and they didn't do it. And my, you know, unspoken response is because you're a crap coach. Um, <laughs> I am judgy. I really am. Uh, but here's what I've observed and what I believe is you're not a failure when you aren't achieving the results you want. It may feel like it. You may be mm -hmm. told it. It may end and it may hurt mm -hmm. because I know what that feels like, that disappointment, that discouragement, you've done everything. You are not failing. You are actually very, very successful and effective at protecting yourself mm -hmm. from a real danger. And you need to find out what you're protecting yourself from so that you can make it safe first. Wow. Then okay. you can have the results you want. But when your conscious mind is going, I want that, but you're, the rest of you below the surface 24 seven is going, no, we're mm -hmm. not. <laughs> you're not going to move forward until you have your whole self on board. And that's yes. what this process is about. You are not your own worst enemy. All of you exist to protect yourself. It just may have some outdated ideas of what protection means. It kept yeah. you safe at a time. You, you were talking about saying, thank you for your service. Yeah. Then you just need yep. to Marie Kondo these mm -hmm. early decisions <laughs> that worked then, but yeah. don't serve you now. Yes. And, and that relationship, I, I would tell people, um, I have no relationship with guilt and all of that. We broke up several years ago and I have no need of them anymore. <laughs> so I, um, but I'm sure she's I, busy this dating is, somebody else. There are plenty someone else. of other people. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh my God, I love this conversation. What I'm going to do, uh, I have to get you back because you have a lot to talk to us because as i mentioned to you here at threads we want to pick up your whole story and start going through and learning from the threads the wisdom the insights that you those places that some of our listeners are there and they're confused of how to come out and this is why i bring people on from all walks of life so that we all could have this conversation together. It's all of us together. It's not, not, I am not any different from anyone. We are here together. We are on this beautiful planet and we ought to exchange conversations. A conversation today, we may say something, it's the key that opens your life for the next 10, 20 years. And I am mm. so excited that you came by. 
I promise you, I'm going to drag you back here and I'm going to get in, in touch a with you. Anytime you want oh. me, I'm back. I would love to. Awesome. I'm going to, um, I'm going to close it at this, uh, this time. And um, I'm going to invite you, I, I promise you, because I know I've been helped through this conversation. So there's a couple more monsters that I got to deal with. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to break up those relationships um, uh, after I get out of this thing. But I really appreciate you. And thank you so much for coming. Oh, my Lord, thank you so much for talking and spending your precious time with us. And tell your wonderful uh, money, honey, who is there now, your husband, uh, you tell him uh, mm -hmm. that I send him all of my love as well. Thank you so much. All right. Good to hear from you. Bye-bye. Everyone who's listening to this podcast, we hope to continually help you to learn how to embrace moments of darkness because it is in the darkness that we learn how to develop and use our abilities to truly see those parts of ourselves often invisible to us in the light. It becomes your responsibility to navigate through all of your trials to find out who you truly are and begin your journey to loving yourself, which is possibly one of the most difficult things you will ever do in your life. To love yourself and to find the real you, but always remember to enjoy the journey. Thank you for coming by. Please subscribe. And if you can support us financially, we deeply appreciate it. Thank you.